What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcast Cross Worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Soma Spider So What? And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got channel membership and Patreon. Links to those will be below. We are reviewing Soma Spider So What? Episode 20 for this video let's try to get up to a hundred likes that would be awesome <laughs> episode 20 had a lot of stuff going on in it and there's going to be a few things i want to talk about but i do want to just do like an overview of what happened in the episode so we had the oats kingdom send out envoys to retrieve Komoko, saying that she destroyed their fortress, therefore they need to take her and punish her and such. I think that's BS, yo. And you know what? Sophia's dad, he thought that was BS too. He's like, you know, the person that they sent, the Oats Kingdom sent a rather suspicious person for something that was diplomatic. Because this person was like a jerk. He did not conduct his, himself very well. So it was very questionable. And the thing is, how are you going to apprehend a spider monster? And it's like, I thought it was BS because it sounded like they were going to use Komoko as a excuse. Like, okay, if we can't take that spider monster monster that's your fault and since you're not letting us take it then that means you are being against us belligerent you want to battle us you want war so if you want that we'll give it to you but then kumoko she killed off the envoy she killed him <laughs> and then Sophia's dad was trying to like do damage control. He's always doing damage control. I feel so bad for him. He's trying to prevent a war. He was already suspicious of the Oath Kingdom. And he's been trying to prevent any conflict. He's trying to keep his home and family safe. And then Kumoko, she has good intentions. But she's leaving a mess for him. And he's like cleaning it up. Cleaning up the dead bodies. And next thing you know, the Oath Kingdom is declaring war. They're not invading, but they're declaring war and they have an alliance. So it's like, yo, what's your guys' damage? Like, what? <laughs> you guys made an alliance? Oh, okay. All right. And then at the same time, well, not at the same time, they did like a little fast forward thing. This is after Komoko's has this resolve, I was like, you know what? I kinda set this problem, so I'm gonna help. <laughs> I'm gonna help baby bloodsucker's family and fix this. And she's like, let's raise hell, you know? And then there's a fast forward that you see the seasons change. And I'm like, oh, okay. We're going to see how long this battle is. We're gonna see the work that Komoko's gonna put in and then all of a sudden you see like the army growing. It got bigger. And it's like, whoa, okay. I can see that the other kingdoms have increased their forces. Wow. Um, nor wouldn't it be normal that the armies get smaller as time passes by? Because, you know, soldiers are dying. The population is decreasing. And it turns out that it's 15 years later, and it's Hugo and his army, his al allied army, because it's like multiple kingdoms too. Because it's Hugo's kingdom, or empire, and Shun's kingdom with his brother, who uh, declared him to be like a fugitive and such. Then there's the followers of the word church. So there's that alliance thing. I'm not too sure there's any other party. But there's those three. So that's happening 15 years later. And if you guys remember in my review for episode 19, I was wondering if they're going to do that. Have like the 
two different battles or wars showcase it at the same time. I'm wondering how they're going to do that because it took a whole episode just to build up to the beginning of this war to explain why this war is happening. I don't know how they're going to showcase both wars <laughs> at the same time from beginning to end. I mean, this is episode 20. There's going to be 24 episodes. There's only four more episodes left. And you got Ariel and you got Ponymus. So it's like, uh, I don't think <laughs> there's enough episodes to explain everything, everybody's size and whatnot. We're done with that stuff, okay? And then in the past where Komoko is 15 years ago, Komoko, she encounters Administrator G. He introduces himself and he is so nice. He's way nicer and calm than I thought he would be. Because when we first met him in the labyrinth, he was like kind of standoffish and he sounded really annoyed. <laughs> he sounded annoyed with Kumoko and Administrator D. But in this one, he introduces himself to Kumoko and he asks her for a favor. He requests a favor. It's like, whoa, bruh, you're like powerful. You can travel through dimensions and such. Like, I'm pretty sure you can be like Thanos from Avengers and just snap your fingers <laughs> and make things disappear. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's how you are. <laughs> This is how I perceive you, Sarah. I don't know you, but that's how I think about you, all right? You seem powerful to me. Anyways, and he's asking her to stop attacking Ariel, and Kumoko's like, wait, 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 wait. I'm not attacking her. She's the one who attacks me, and I'm just defending myself. And I'm thinking, yeah, Kumoko's just defending herself. Like, what do you mean she's attacking Ariel? And then Kumoko remembers that body brain parallel mind body brain it attacked ariel if you guys remember uh body brain connected with ariel and attacked her and kumoko thought that you know body brain was dead and such but apparently body brain is still on the works <laughs> and Administrator G is asking Kumoko to stop it. And this is an interesting scene because this is the first time we've seen Kumoko actually talk. Like talk in this world's language. And it's very interesting because all the other monsters, creatures that we've seen communicating. I like this like echoey sound. I got this like echoey sound going on. Like they're like some other other world being like not part of that world kind of thing. And it's I like how consistent this anime is. That they even make Kumoko sound like that too. And I like how it's letting us differentiate when she's talking to someone and when she's talking to herself because you know she talks to herself a lot. <laughs> So this is really helpful and it lets us know like when she's like talking in her head and then when she's talking to him because when she was talking to Administrator G explain how she can't stop attacking Ariel because she can't control the parallel mind. She explains that whatever's attacking Ariel is her parallel mind and she got disconnected. She can't communicate with body brain. She can't retrieve body brain. And at the same time, when she's talking to Administrator G, she's like thinking to herself, we're able to know what she's actually telling him. <laughs> because when she's talking to herself, she's like, yeah, body brain can keep working. Yeah. Sorry, Administrator G, I can't stop the attack because we're disconnected. It's good that we're disconnected because body brain can still attack her so she doesn't attack me and I can stay safe. You know, it's like that. <laughs> and Administrator G is so nice. He's like, oh, I understand. 
Okay, can't really help that. I didn't un I didn't know about the situation. I'm sorry for imposing on you. It's like, whoa! And every time when he's asking for a favor or request, he's like, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's like, whoa. So the question is, was it really that important? And the other question is, why do you want Ariel to be safe? Like, why did you want the attack to stop on Ariel? Why is Ariel important to you? I'm worrying about that because he's an administrator, but Ariel is in the system. And then 15 years later, he's Administrator G is part of her court, her party, her entourage, whatever you call that. <laughs> Whenever they have like a get together, a meeting, they talk amongst each other. He's part of that. He's also asking Komoko to hide, to keep a low profile, to stop interacting with humans because she is causing a ripple and it's going to result in chaos. My thing is, and I said it in my reaction, if you haven't seen my reaction yet, I asked, well, I didn't ask. I pointed out that she's not the only reincarnate in this world. So she's not going to be the only one causing ripples. I'm guessing that he doesn't know about the other reincarnates. He, Administrator G, Administrator G, only knows about Komoko. <laughs> so it's like, bruh, you don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know how much ripples are going to happen in this world. And I think he's telling Komoko this specifically because he said that she's getting too strong. And... I'm like wondering, what's wrong with her getting too strong? Like, why is that bad? And I'm wondering if he wants Ariel to be the strongest. And like, it seems like he has a plan for her. And I'm wondering if it's because of what happened in the past when like the hero and the demon lord had that fight and then caused that like dimension disruption kind of thing, which results in reincarnates to come into this world. Like, it seems like Administrator G is doing damage control himself and Ariel is part of that plan. Ariel is part of that damage control. Now, he is asking Komoko to like back off, hide and such, stop interacting with the people of this world and Komoko's like, I can't. And she has like these flashbacks of the prediction that the world is going to end. and. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot about that. I forgot that the world was gonna end. And Komoko wants to prevent that. She wants to prevent the world ending. So it's like, ah, oh, that's right. Komoko can't just hide. She, she's got plans. She's, she's got stuff to do. And I'm just wondering if he said that she's causing ripples and this ripples, it sort of reflected on how she was trying to help Sophia's dad and his area. You know how she tried to protect Sophia by defeating the elves, the humans, getting rid of them, and she <laughs> she killed off the envoys of the Oath's Kingdom, and because they died, the Oath's Kingdom was like, okay, we declare war when this whole time she was trying to keep Sophia's family safe, but they still end up going or being in danger. So, what if her trying to prevent the world ending results the world ending? I know, that sounds really confusing, but it's like, what if her interference causes that? You know? Like, I want to say it's sort of like those time paradoxes. Like, <laughs> what you see is happening because of your actions now. Because now you have that knowledge. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, yeah, let me know why she is. Let me know why she's not going to cause the world ending. Another part I found interesting was they did show Philomos, a.k.a. Oka-sensei, and why she had her students, her reincarnated students, kidnapped and bought and it was her fault not her fault but she was the reason why Panos was doing that and she is the reason why Panos knows about reincarnates 
They show that I was right. I guessed it right. If you didn't see my guessing in the review of episode 19, go check it out. I did wonder how did Thomas know about the reincarnate, and my theory was it had to be because of Philmos, his daughter, because she was reincarnated. He must have known through her, and it was it was Philmos. She developed telepathy when she was a baby. And she spoke to Potamus and told him that her students are in danger and she wanted him to save them. And yeah, he, he started saving them. He protected them. But the weird thing is, so Philomos can see her students. She has like the student roster thing. She can see their past, present, and future. She can see their future. She can see when they die. And a lot of them die in the Elf Forest. She's in the Elf Forest. Potamus took all the reincarnates, brought them to the Elf Forest. They're being kept at the Elf Forest. There's going to be a war in the Elf Forest. They're going to die in the Elf Forest. I don't think Finimals thought this through. If she didn't want their deaths to come true, I think she should have taken them away from the elf forest <laughs> where it was predicted they were going to die or predestined that they were going to die it's weird i i'm <laughs> you had good intentions Fimals, but <laughs> they weren't they weren't thought through very well or i think your dad ponymous purposely did this and he purposely didn't let you realize what was happening and that was my review of Soma Spider. So what, episode 20. What did you think about that episode? What did you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos do stop by the stream to have that one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I also post podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We are available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this was the Super Fina channel reviewing Soma Spider So What episode 20. Hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.